Now that we just finished talking about Vesper and the, ang the bond angles that we expect out of organic molecules for a given number of bonds around each uh, atom, we can talk about an important concept that comes up in organic chemistry, and that's angle strain. I suppose it could come up in other areas, but we see it quite often here. And what I mean is that we're forcing a bond angle to be significantly different, either smaller or bigger than what it should be. And for now, the examples that I have are forcing an angle to be much smaller than it wants to be, but there could be some other areas where we could force an angle to be larger than it would like to be. It's a little bit less common and we have, uh, you have to make a much bigger molecule in order for that to happen. We can produce angle strain in fairly small molecules. So one that has a pretty high amount of angle strain is uh, cyclopropane. So I'll just draw this all out here. And we just finished talking about how each of these angles around the carbons would ideally be 109.5 degrees, right? But you notice that we have a, a small triangle here. And the actual angle that will happen is 60 degrees. This is significantly smaller than the ideal 109.5 degrees. And you can also see the same kind of structure in epoxides because it has the same bond angles ideals and the same or similar actual bond angles of about 60 degrees everywhere. So we're compressing this angle and it doesn't like to be that way, right? It would prefer to break one of these bonds and open up and relieve that strain. And if we could, then it would be in a lower energy state. So when we have angle strain, it is easier for a reaction to happen where it breaks the strain and opens up this ring opens up that ring. So epoxides are fairly reactive towards a lot of different species that would not be reactive if the strain was not there. It makes it easier to react. So assuming the reaction breaks the strain. Cyclopropane is not the only molecule that has angle strain or epoxides. There are others. So cyclobutane, again, the ideal is 109.5, but the actual is going to be 90. So it's not as bad as our cyclopropane, but it's still there. And you can also have reactions where one of those is replaced by, a, one of the carbons is replaced by an oxygen. And some of the reactions that epoxides undergo, these uh, will also do, but not as many because there's not as much strain. Another molecule where there's a lot of angle strain is the 
cyclobutadiene, which ideally has a 120 degree angle because it's got a double bond here, but it's being forced into a 90 degree angle. That produces a significant amount of strain and these are very reactive. They, they like to make something else to relieve the strain. Now let's look at uh, just on up the line here with a, a cyclopentane. Now if you calculate the bond angle for a five membered ring, well, let's let's keep with our convention here. It should be 109.5 degrees. If you calculate it, it's 108 degrees. This is a very tiny difference. So there's almost no strain. And in fact, five-membered rings are very stable and they're relatively easy to form, at least from an angle strain perspective. Um, you have to do special things in order to form some of these compounds just to get around the fact that I'm not going to take a linear molecule and then fold it up into this. It, that, that pathway would not work. You can take linear molecules and fold them on themselves and make five-membered rings and six-membered rings and, and larger. Now, a six-membered ring uh, would have a larger angle than what we would desire, but it's big enough that it doesn't have to be a flat ring. It will distort a little bit. You might have heard of chair and boat configurations and different things, and we'll talk about those later. But larger rings, like starting at six members, don't have to be flat. So they can relieve the angle strain. You can make larger rings and also build other structures around them to force that part to be flat. And then you would produce angle strain in that case but that's less common than the ones that I noted up here. So angle strain is something that we should think about when we're making a molecule, especially if we have three or four membered rings or epoxides or rings that have double bonds in them that force a bond angle that's significantly smaller than what the ideal is that can produce sites on the rings that would normally not react, but since it has the angle strain, it may react, it may open up the ring, it may destroy that part of the molecule. And maybe we want to do that, but sometimes we don't. And so we'll just have to kind of keep that in mind and try to think ahead when we're dealing with these types of molecules. Thank you for watching the video on angle strain, and we'll see you in the next one.